हेलो हेलो था ओके गुड स्टूडेंट्स आर कमिंग इन सन यस तिखान एंग मोनी एंग लो नो पंग हो हे सोमते सोमते इज गोइंग टू होस्ट इज ओके आई थिंक सोमते कैन से समथिंग अबाउट द प्रोग्राम इन द मिन व्हाइल वेटिंग बिकॉज Uh, it becomes <laughs> more yes. likely hmm somte i think uh, i think we should start we should start it okay, okay. somte what happened i'm here i'm here ma'am i'm here, I'm, I'm okay. here. hello <clears throat> should we start yeah yeah i'm here Okay can you just give Okay a, should we start talk out the bad thing inform the program yes i think it's very very okay. we can start it Hello So they please read out the program for the students what we are going to do you just give them an introduction about the program Uh okay uh hello uh, everyone good morning welcome to our webinar uh I'm, my name is Dr. Melson Patel and uh on behalf of the research and consultancy cell uh I will welcome uh, all of you to this webinar and uh the name of our webinar is uh, webinar in celebration of national education day so while we are waiting for the other participants let me just read out the program and very sorry for the delay the inaugural address will be uh, given by our principal lero tong tso and uh, the first speaker will be dr ashel zui thangi reminiscing dr molana abdul kalam azad on national education day and second speaker will be dr julia de moiralte education system in covid-19 pandemic impact in the learning environment and the third speaker will be dr zot hanzami maintaining positive mental health during covid-19 pandemic and the concluding remarks will be given by professor sanito chong and the winners of the slogan writing competition will be announced in this program so everyone stay tuned uh, we are going to have will be having a very fun program today i know all the classes are suspended so uh, this will not uh, take long so i promise that uh, whatever time you spend here will be worth every minute and uh, we already have 401 participants so uh, ma'am should we start i think it's better if we, if we can start it so whoever And, come in they can come in they can join okay okay all right and okay let me just mention that this program is uh, live on youtube right now so you can tell your friends and your uh, and your friends from other colleges as well to view our program okay <clears throat> Uh once again my name is Dr. Mil Sampatso and on behalf of the research and consultancy cell I welcome all of you to this webinar. Uh we are very fortunate to be uh to celebrate National Education Day uh in remembrance of Dr. Molana Abdul Kalam Azad who was born on this day in 1888. I hope this webinar will be of immense help to each and everyone because we have Uh, a list of distinguished speakers lined up and and like i've said before the winners of the slogan writing competition will be announced later in the program but first and foremost let us call on our respected principal rotong patuao 
to inaugurate this webinar. Dedicated faculty members of Government Rangmana College, Chairman of Research and Consultant Cell, Professor Sunny Tau Chong, and members of Organizing Committee are hardworking resource persons, all from our very own college, Rangmana College, Dr. H. Lalzui Thangi, Political Science Department, Dr. Zoltan Zami, Psychology Department, and Dr. Juliet Lalrimoy, Psychology Department, participants of slogan writing competition, and my dear students, I welcome you all on the celebration of 12th National Education Day. It is a great honor for me as the principal of the biggest college under Mizoram University, the Frangmana College, to give welcome address today. The 11th November is celebrated as the National Education Day to commemorate the birth anniversary of Dr. Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad. is a poet, a journalist, a freedom fighter, a great scholar, an eminent educationist, and lastly, the first education minister of India. As the world is facing unfortunate times of COVID-19 pandemic, our college is able to organize this webinar and has launched slogan writing competition for the students of this college. And our commerce department is organizing a national seminar on technology and impact of impact on accounting at 4.30 in the evening. This webinar aims to enlighten the participants on the importance of education and how to come up with the education system during the COVID-19 pandemic. On the occasion of National Education Day, I'm happy to wish the, organizer, the organizers and participants of this event a great success in inspiring our young uh, students. I take this opportunity to thank all the participants for taking their time out to be a part of this event. I hope this program will help to ignite the minds of the students to innovate and take steps in shaping a better future. Let me say some lines in Mijo. Um sang nile pariyat November nisam pakhat Atang Khan India Rama. National Education Day, Mantran Aloni. Education Minister Musaber, Dr. Maulana Abdul Kalam Hazad, Azad Pian Cham, then Chanin Head Day, him Mantran Aloni Tony. For in he, Avoy Song, but he not Aloni, there my Tule Halama Miril M. M. Chanchin Bu. Me ni bok zirna ngai sang mi zirna manga retaina dom chua tum chat me pahuai sen tak 
Ania, a Muslim puite po antik lo chuan how ngam may chi Ania, then digna atan nalama companies company sorkar po avoure lo ni non violence he atisena abe tleto bangin man magandi ni po kan ani zui chota and to a role aim a money when national education day a hyan real rutharin kan zir na hi it hirang u din kan som du ah pas ngur ngur atok to lo nuam tikoba kan zir angay to ane nelson mandela chuan education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world atia Nulaya Mizoram din pun kan fajiang le lekha lekha zirthai ngor ngor kan tam angin thiam tak ero chu Mizoram kan wang phian competitive exam result chuaka lalmanga yate lalrit omite ming zon mu ahar ta biau mai kan lova pe azim tiel tiel line Ama aya tartam kan tumbok loy si digna le renom na mutur abang tiel tiel layla pur vaite tem te hovin mindang rutam der mai ani hi ho zina mang yan kan ram hi ngetakin ihung u din kan som du ani zina mang in digna le renom na itung ilang u Zina mang thobin kan ram nei chun mizoram hi nam dang te enton turin za om takin ihung chuak leng u tin to pera chuan zina mang in patian ram izau zelang u kalau me For our first speaker, let's welcome Dr. Ashil Zuitangi, Associate Professor, Department of Post Science, Shambana College. Ms. Pinky. Okay, thank you. Please unmute. Please unmute. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, can I be heard? Can is this am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um okay, respected principal, our senior faculty members, my dear colleagues and students, and all the participants of this webinar. It is my privilege to be here to share a few words to reminisce one of our great leaders, a visionary, and a pioneer in promoting education in India. Molana Abul Kalam Azad was known as the man who made India realize the value of education. Educationist, freedom fighter, politician, and a journalist, Molana Abul Kalam Azad donned many hats in his more than four decade long public life. Mahatma Gandhi remarked about Azad by counting him as a man, a person of the caliber of Plato, Aristotle and Pythagoras. An intellectual par excellence, he left behind a lasting legacy in the field of India's education. National Education Day 
today is observed annually in India to commemorate the birth anniversary of Molana Abul Kalam Azad, the first education minister of independent India, who served from 15th August 1947 until 2nd February 1958. Azad was born in Mecca, Saudi Arabia on 11th November 1888. His father was an Indian, his mother of the Arab origin, and the family moved to Kolkata when Azad was just two years old. He was homeschooled in the subjects of mathematics, philosophy, world history, science, and in languages like Persian, Urdu, and Arabic. While pursuing his traditional Islamic studies, it is believed that Azad was uh, Azad started learning English without his father's knowledge. From a very young age, Azad was influenced by the teaching of Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan about the importance of a well-rounded education. And so along with English, he embarked on the quest to read about Western philosophy, history, and contemporary politics. He, was, he traveled to Afghanistan, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. About his works and politics, his early interest in education and composition, he, ma he made him a very staunch nationalist, and he would critique the policies of British and, and their injustice against his fellow Indians in his weekly newspaper, Al Hilal, and later on known as Al, -Labag, uh, Al Balag, he was greatly influenced by Gandhi's non-violent civil disobedience movement. The British tried to shut his voice by banning his publication, but Azad kept moving. He led the Khilafat movement and became the youngest president of Indian National Congress in 1923. He was later imprisoned for participating in the Quit India movement. And he found no contradiction between being an Islamic scholar and an ardent Indian nationalist. Azad declared, I, as a Muslim, am proud of being an Indian. I am part of the indivisible, uh, indivisible unity that is Indian nationality. He had a lot of contribution, uh, even in the making of the constitution. The seventh schedule of the constitution list subjects on which the central and the state government can enact legislation. Here, Molana Azad was strongly against leaving education to the states. He argued that education was a matter of great importance and the central government should be giving this authority in order to ensure a uniform national standard of education across the country. Ultimately, the issue was resolved by retaining education in the state list, but also including entries related to higher education under the union list. About his contribution to education, as the first education minister of the country from 1947 to 1958, he advocated for free and compulsory primary education for all children up to the age of 14, as he believed it was the right of all citizens. He went on to establish the University of Jamia Milia Islamia in Delhi and contributed to the setting up of the IIT. He played a key role in the establishment of other educational institutions. Some of the important boards and commissions set up by Molana Abul Kalam Azad during his tenure are University Grant Commission, UGC, All India Council for Technical Education, Karakpur Institute of Higher Education, the University Education Commission, the Secondary Education Commission. Abul Kalam Azad strongly advocated education for women, free and compulsory primary education for children up to the age of 14. He founded the All India Council of Technical Education in 1945, Sahitya Academy, and many more institutions. It was under his leadership that the Central Institute of Education in India was formed. 
there were other numerous institutions which across India which were named after him in his honor. And um, his home housed the Molana Abul Kalam Azad Institute of Asian Studies. And now it has been transformed to Molana Azad Museum. In, it was his early effort that helped shape all inclusive policy of education, the benefit of which is being reaped today. For democratic approach and universalization of education, he focused on these issues primary education all over the country. And there should be languages, the state language, Hindi, and also English. Universalization of elementary education and elimination of literacy was his policy. Azad's commitment to provide secular, liberal, modern and universal education is relevant even today and it continues to guide us for achieving education for all. The contribution of his education policy was his conviction that democracy cannot function without the eradication of illiteracy. On February 22nd, 1958, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru went on air to announce that today we have lost the leader of our caravan, referring to Molana Azad, who passed away on that day. Even after his passing, Molana Azad was bestowed with many awards. In 1975, Molana Azad Memorial Academy was established in Nakhnao with the mission to promote Azad's unfailing idea of patriotism, secularism, and national integration. In 1989, on the occasion of Azad's birth century, the Union Minister of Minority Affairs mm -hmm. set up Molana Azad Education Foundation, which provides national fellowship to MPhil and PhD researchers. There are many other um, awards and uh, which are which were given to him. And with that, I would like to sum up. Uh, my speech on Molana Abul Kalam Azad, his contribution and his achievement. We pay tribute and honor to the man who shaped the education of our country on his birth anniversary, 11th November. Thank you. Back to you, Somte. Thank you, Dr. Pinky. Uh, before we move on to our next speaker, uh, we will announce the third prize winner of the slogan writing competition. A lot of entries came in and uh, thank you so much to all the participants for making this competition a big success. The, the research still had a hard time picking the winner because all of them were equally good. But anyway, uh, the third prize winner of the slogan writing competition is Lal Eng Zwali, role number 196, Public Administration Decor, fifth semester. Congrats, Lal Eng Zwali. And moving on, let's call our next speaker, Dr. Juliet Lermoyiralte, Associate Professor, Department of Psychology, Shambana College. Respected principal, teachers, students, and all the participants in the webinar today. Good morning, everybody. So today I would like, I will, I'm grateful to the self for giving me the opportunity to be a resource person on this, in this, member, uh, in this webinar. I have a slide to share, which uh, I'll just share my slide. Okay, Somte, can you, uh, I, want, I want to share my slide. Can you enable me? Just hold on. Okay. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. this is, uh, okay, the topic that I was given to present today is on education system 
in COVID-19 pandemic impact in the learning environment. So let me start by talking about the education system first in brief. So let me raise this question, what is education? So education can be anything we, we might have been taught about the formal definition of education. But I would like to give an informal and very practical explanation on what education is all about. Education is a process for gaining information, knowledge. Knowledge for what? Knowledge to be used for growth, development, for self, for the community, for the nation, for the whole world. Each of us are important. We have roles to play for the betterment of the world that we can do by applying what we have learned. So the education system of the world has been greatly affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Academic institutions are immensely affected. The need to control the spread of the pandemic has brought about a norm where social distancing has become so important that it has now become our normal behavior. Consequently, educational institutions have to be closed for how long, we don't know. We live in an uncertain time where uncertainty has become the norm of the day. So let's now look at how our education has been affected. So here is a slide that shows how learners affected by school closures caused by COVID-19 as of September 30th, 2020. So if we take a look at the world, the whole world is basically affected by uh, this pandemic. Institutions have to be closed. They have no choice. We have no choice. So the red color indicates countries where countrywide school is closed. And the yellowish brown uh, indicates where um, partial schools are closed. And the dark blue indicates where no school closures. And blue indicates academic break. <coughs> Light blue indicates no data. So you can see, as you can see, India is marked by red, which shows that all the institutions, all the educational institutions have been closed. So efforts to slow the spread of COVID-19 through non-pharmaceutical interventions and preventive measures such as social distancing and self-isolation have prompted the widespread closure of primary, secondary, and tertiary schooling in over 100 countries. Children and youth out of school due to COVID-19 closures and young people classified as need. Let's look at this slide where, uh, you know, immense effect is there. So children, 89% of the world's population has been affected. Children are affected. Children and youth out of school due to COVID-19 closure. That comes to 89% of the world's student population as of March, 2020. So basically, in figures, it is 1.52 billion children and youth are affected by the closure of its educational institution. And young people classified as need, that means not in education, not in employment, not in training. So uh, 267 million people have been, young people have been classified as need. That is not in education, not in employment, not in training. So. Uh, the youth have been greatly affected. More than 1.5 billion students and youth across the planet are, are or have been affected by school and university closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's look at, now, at the consequences of academic institution closures. Academic institution clo closures carry high school and economic, high social and economic costs for people across communities. The resulting disruptions exacerbate already existing disparities within the education system, but also in other aspects of our lives. These include interrupted learning. Schooling provides essential learning and when institutions close, children and youth are deprived opportunities for growth and development. The disadvantages are disproportionate for underprivileged learners who tend to have fewer educational property opportunities beyond school. Confusion and stress for teachers. When educational institutions close, 
especially unexpectedly and for unknown durations, teachers are often unsure of their obligations and how to maintain connections with students to support learning. Tra learning. Transitions to distance learning platforms tend to be messy and frustrating, even in the best circumstances. Parents unprepared for distance and homeschooling. When institutions close, parents are often asked to facilitate the learning of children at home and can struggle to perform this task. This is especially true for parents with limited education and resources. Challenges creating, maintaining, and improving distance learning. Demand for distance learning skyrockets when institutions close and often overwhelms existing portals to remote education. Moving learning from classrooms to homes at scale and in a hurry presents enormous challenges, both human and technical. High economic costs. Working parents are more likely to miss work when institutions close in order to take care of their children. This results in wage loss and tend to negatively impact productivity. Increased pressure on schools and school systems that remain open. Localized school closures place burdens on schools as governments and parents alike redirect children to schools that remain open. Rise in dropout rates. It is a challenge to ensure children and youth to return and stay in institutions when schools and colleges remain open after closures. This is especially true of protracted closures and when economic shocks place pressure on children to work and generate income for financially distressed families. According to International Labour Organization and uh, United Nations Children's Fund, COVID-19 pandemic may push millions more children into child labor in developing countries like India. Increased exposure to violence and exploitation. When institutions shut down, early marriages increase, more children are recruited into militias. Sexual exploitation of girls and young women rises. Teenage pregnancies become more common and child labor grows. Social isolation. Institutions, as we know, are hubs of social activity where there are lots of interaction among people and human interaction. When institutions close, many children and youth miss out on social contact that is essential to learning and development. Challenges measuring and validating learning. Calendar assessments, notably high stakes examinations that determine admission or advancement to new education levels and institutions are thrown into this array when institutions close. Strategies to postpone, skip or administer examinations at a distance raise serious concerns about fairness, especially when access to learning becomes variable. Disruptions to assessments result in stress for students and their families and can dis trigger disengagement. So my dear students, I invite you to be aware of your potentials, your potentiality to adapt, to be positive, to be optimistic. God has made man in such a way that man will always evolve in any circumstance. Let's continue to learn, to grow. Pray, remain positive, be safe. Thank you. I hand over to you, Sante. Thank you, Dr. Jyadil Ramoy. It was a very enlightening uh, lecture. And now it's time to announce the second prize winner of the slogan writing competition. And the winner is Bonnie Valpega, role number 28, Department of Economics, first semester. Congrats, Bonnie. And the prize money will not be handed in cash it will be transferred to their bank accounts, just so you know. And for our third speaker, let's call on Dr. Zotan Zami, Associate Professor, Department of Psychology, Shangbana College.
Miss in yes. unmute. Okay, I, I was, uh, yeah, I can unmute. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Mom. Uh, our, uh, to our respected uh, principal, uh, my colleagues in Shambhana College, and uh, also my uh, friends in the research and, uh, research and consultancy uh, cell, my dear students. Uh, it's a great privilege and honor for me to be able to come here uh, in your midst and uh, to be addressing uh, the topic at hand that is given to me. I have a slide and I would share that slide. Okay, uh, the topic that was given to me is uh, maintaining one sec, okay, let me get my slide ready. Okay, uh, maintaining a positive mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, let me go to uh, start, I will start my presentation immediately. And uh, so first of all, before I start with the, <clears throat> how to maintain it, the first thing that we need to understand is, you know, how, what is mental health? So uh, since uh, today, most of us are students, I will concentrate on part of the student population. So uh, let's look at why mental health, okay? Let's look at why mental health is important among the student population. So first of all, what is mental health, okay? Mental health is, it includes uh, our emotional, our psychological, as well as our social uh, well-being. So it is about a few good factors, and it also affects. So definitely, this mental health affects the way that we think, the way that we act, that is the way that we behave, and the way that we are feeling inside. Okay, so it also determines the way that we handle stress, how we communicate and relate with others and also the choices that we make. And so further on, it helps us realize how much we can do. That is how we, how, what our full potentials are and also work productively. Here, when you talk about working productively, we talk about uh, as a student, how well you can do your uh, college work, how well you can study, you know, all the things that are related with college matter. And also, uh, the better your mental health, the more you become a contributory member to our community and to your community. So all in all, in order to be a healthy person, you need to have good mental health. So basically, uh, among the student population, it is very, very essential that we all have good mental health and that your mental health matters. And so at the end of the day, you have to take care as students to be a better student, you know, to be better students, to be a meaningful contributors within your own community, to handle your stresses and your everyday life, and also to make you feel good. You know, the feel good factor is very, very important. your mental health you know sometimes uh okay along the street you meet a person and uh usually when we meet other people we say okay hi how are you you know and naturally when usually when we talk about i'm fine you know we uh, tend to make it in terms of i'm fine usually is in terms of physical health but you know in order to say that i am fine you also need to be fine in mentally. So since, you know, if you can say that you are fine, you have to be feeling good about yourself, you know, because you're, the way that you're feeling directly affects your mental health as well, okay, physical health as well. So to be healthy, you have to be healthy mentally, psycho uh, mentally, socially, and Okay. So how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected the he mental health of students? So as we all know, I mean, like you're all new to college, so maybe you will not be very sure of this. All colleges 
closed down <coughs> on the 17th of March, 2020, under the instruction of the Mizoram government and the UGC. And so from that point onwards, on, 25th, on, on the 22nd of March, Mizoram came under lockdown, you know? So that has been like uh, now over eight, eight months running. That has been a long time. So what it definitely has, has done is that the pandemic has influenced the mental health of students, like you all. And when this happened, I think you were having your 12th standard board examination. So I'm sure if you recall, you will remember the way that you were feeling at that point of time. Okay. So this pandemic, which has lasted for over eight months, has put mental health of students in a very, very vulnerable position. That means, uh, you know, the mental health has uh, definitely gone down. It has increased the psychological distress that is Rirubwaina uh, Mo, the insecurity, insecurity. And of course, we are very uncertain. That is what Dr. Juliet was saying also in the last presentation. And definitely this has increased mental health problems, especially uh, anxiety and depressive symptoms. When you here, we don't talk about disorders okay we're just talking about symptoms of anxiety and depressive symptoms and of course this came about with three main things that is number one so afraid disease that is COVID-19 stigma that is uh, related with uh, COVID-19 and then of course lockdown it has been a great lockdown has been a great challenge so it has definitely affect the mental health of the student. And to add to that all, the uncertainty has, because we don't know, as Ms. Uh, Dr. Juliet has said, we don't know when classes are going to be open, when we will be able to have, uh, you know, uh, when we will be have able to open up our, the doors of our colleges and, you know, all that thing. So this has put all institutions, higher, higher education institutions like colleges, under online teaching mode. So again, uh, this has, in a way, decreased the level of motivation among students, okay? And because, uh, you know, it is tough for all of us to be online all the time and also increase the level of stress. Because, see, uh, when we started this webinar, there were about 400 and something of us, which has decreased again. Why? Because of the network problem, again. So, and, you know, that has really, really immensely, uh, you know, increased the stress level of learning. And of course, social distancing, we are in our own homes, attending classes. We don't mix around with uh, our friends, our, uh, you know, so that has increased the loneliness among the students and for more they to as for you are isolated, you can hang around with your friends. So again, the whole uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, you know, has really, really put students in a very di uh, different position that was not experienced before pre lockdown, pre COVID time. Okay. Okay, so how would you improve your mental health? How would, you know, as students, how can you improve your mental health? Okay, the first thing you need to know is get your facts right about COVID-19. We're so afraid right now, COVID-19, contract disease, you know, being stricken by the COVID-19, but are your facts right? Are you, do you know everything correctly? You know, we hear so many things on social media. We see so many things on the news. But you need to know is that you need to get your facts right. You know, because fact minimizes fear. Fact Okay, it was started in Wuhan, Runtana, but there are so many things that you need to know how you can contract the disease, how, what are the symptoms of the disease, how you can protect yourself from the disease, things like that. You need to get your facts right, okay? And of course, you need to take care of yourself. 
taking care of yourself, how? You need to exercise, okay? You need to exercise. Food ringot, a ringot, mood ringot, plus it and ringot, carnilo. Get into physical activity mode, okay? Eat well. Eat it, anilo. More. Boost up your immunity. Exercise cannot eat well, but you have to eat well. Nang ma taksang e zong ka e yang ay mutro. Sleep well. You know, at your age, you need your eight hours sleep. Do that. Don't stay up too late in the night and get up too late during the day. You know, you have to sleep well. Maintain good hygiene. In the fine ulubro, good filter, taksa po ka fayangaya, iho e zan itom no po ka am a fayangaya. Okay? And of course, have a hobby. I don't watch too much news about COVID 19, either on social media or on TV. And of course, you're afraid, you're anxious, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're sad. Accept that, you know, you just have to accept that. And it is just know that it is okay to be afraid, it is okay to be anxious, it is okay to be frustrated, it is okay to be angry, and it is also okay to be sad. Connect with other people, okay? Just because you're isolated, doesn't mean you are not connected. You have your phone, you have your WhatsApp group, you have your Instagram. With us, not new anything about COVID-19 <clears throat> all the time. And always remember that it is okay not to be okay. Okay, it is okay. If you make mistakes, if you have a bad day, if things don't turn out the way that you need it to be, me, I can go and beat the car up low. This is good for me, eat the pork up for you. Okay, so uh, feeling okay. Don't be afraid to admit that feeling okay. If you want to ask help for help, from one college, we've got the counseling cell, we've got the psychology department. Ask for help, come to us, talk to us. If you need us, you can always, your own time, come up to us and also help others who are in need. You have to think, think, you have to think things always on the positive side, okay? Be positive. I am going in till tears from, from, okay? Oh, COVID-19, you know, don't think like that. Okay, there's a possibility. Think this way. COVID-19, prevention. it is not the end of the world like that, okay? And of course, you need to pray and maintain a daily routine. daily routine. Okay? And so, now, what we have to realize is that because of the COVID-19, we cannot go back to what it was before, okay? We cannot go back to what life was before. We have to think that life has changed, and life has changed for the forever type until we find a vaccine which has not yet materialized. It might be coming maybe in 2021, we might have it, but till now, we don't have a vaccine. So you have to know there is no normal to go back to, okay? You have to think that today I have to start life in the new normal, okay? You have to start life in the new normal. So what is the new normal, okay? So what are the things that are essential in the new normal? So we have heard this so many times before. You know, this order was given on the 22nd of, no, on the 18th of March by the Health and Family Welfare Department of Mizoram. And till now, this is the most effective way of prevention of COVID-19 in Mizoram as of now, not just Mizoram, around the world, okay? So what is the new normal now? The things that you need to know in the new normal. We have in to So maintain your social distancing, two meters, six feet, wear your mask, okay? Wear your mask whenever you go out. And whenever you're going to touch things, wear a disposable <laughs> glove, wash your hands frequently, or use sanitizer. 
for me, I prefer washing hands. That is the best way. I say it's for so I'm So you sanitize if my car. Okay, don't touch your face with your dirty hands. Dirty hands may look unwashed hands. Shim shim can if my car koi koi do. And uh, you know, usually uh, when we sneeze, we cover our hands with like this. Okay, can snatch can can put in can put my china to not one little olivine. Use the back of your hands like this. Okay. So use the back of your hands while you're covering uh, your mouth during your sneezing and your coughing. And watch where you spit, okay? Till takna, isada, pemperna, katyan, so on, ka. It's not on, watch where you're spitting. Don't be, like, you know, midang petan asla omti ka, sharing to renya. Anna zongin du ma ka, si ba yibu lavang. Okay, don't just shake hands with other people or unnecessarily don't touch other people. In kwa twak twak te ka him tolo, okay? So man tuan, don't shake hands, don't touch other people. Okay, unless it is inside the family setting. And don't go out unless it's really Julia was Nilo Zwan also get home. Avoid public gatherings. Put puna hi alone. Closed up space up hit one alone as well. Open space alone though didn't go on the bin. Okay. Closed up space alone. And wherever you can opt for online shopping. Okay, or for online shopping online at Hililea. So, on a case on a claim here, I'm very important. Okay, to light on e payment alert, or you have a Google Pay and you know all that thing in young PTM. Use that as much as possible or swipe your card. Okay, if you have and you obey your COVID rules. Okay, COVID rules in me, didn't even run the toy in a vein, okay please in this very very uncertain times please uh, obey these uh covid rules and i have put a picture up here on the new normal lifestyle that you should uh you know small small things that you should have in your bag whenever you go out your face mask your hand sanitizer or your wet tissue paper and the disposable gloves. Make sure that uh, you have this in your bag. Have a PPE bag, separate PPE bag to Pohyan, where you can put all these small, small things, face mask, pay in face mask, pay, gloves, pay in the hand sanitizer, box, and more. So that that you have a spare mask in your, uh, you know, in your bag. Okay, so we have said this over and over uh, before, and uh, we will, you know, in Shep Novik Bakam, this is the only preventive measure that we have right now and the moment. So we know that, that there is no normal to go back to right now, but you have to build a new one. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Back to you, Sonte. Thank you, Dr. Zotanzami, for the talk that we need so much in these difficult times. And lastly, to conclude the webinar and to announce the first prize winner of the slogan writing competition, uh, let us call on Professor Sanito Tong, Department of Education, Shambana College, and who is also the chairman of the research cell. Professor Sani. Miss, in unmute, I can unmute. Yeah, oh, okay. So, okay, yes, yes, I'm okay, going okay. to announce a winner, but it will take a little bit time. So, the suspense. There should be a suspense, okay? So what I would like to say, share with you is, today is a National Education Day. So what is education? Why is it so important? And the theme is national commitment to all aspects of education. Yes, I would like to stress the importance of education. It's because of education that we are here, that I'm able to share online with you. It's because of education. So it may be formal or it may be informal, whatever, it is all education, but 
why it is important. It's important because your teachers, the pe people that you have seen in the screen, we are there, it's because of education. Otherwise, I may be in a very remote village being a cultivator, or I may have already looked very old if I'm not educated. So that's a simple thing. And it's because of education that you're able to hear all what you have just heard about it. Okay, so this is important. And not only that, you can see that because of education, there is a change of behavior. It's because of my education that I'm able to communicate with you in English. I'm able to read. I'm able to think, or I can watch the TV and understand the communication. Isn't it so? That simple thing that I would like to share with you, and not only that, you can have your own opinion, you can have your own idea, your values have changed. Have you not received any education or if you haven't gone to any school? So you won't form your own opinion, your values have changed. So we give so much importance to American election, president election. It's, it's because of our education, isn't it? So we reach one country to another in such a short time, it's because of education that the world is becoming very small. So I don't have to explain that so much, but what I would like to tell you about from the national perspective is that this thing, the national education day is on the birthday of Maulana Ab Abul Kalam. He know the significance and the importance of this nation so much that the UGC, University Grant Commission, the one which is looking after the quality and the functioning of the higher education is the one who started that. And not only that, compulsory education. All this, he was the one who initiated it. When India attained independence, education was only a directive principle. All the whole world knew that education is the surest, is the only instrument that can bring positive change in the life of the people, economically, politically, socially. So that's why they give so much importance to education, but it takes so many years. It, it was only in 2010, that 2020, 2020, that we were able, 2010, that we were able to make it a fundamental right, right to education in Article, 2000, uh, Article 21A. It becomes a fundamental right that children below 14 years should receive education. It should be free and compulsory. The SSA, the CCE, and all this are becoming so prominent. It's because of education. And it is because of education that Mizoram, we are reaching the status. We are becoming who we are right now. And all the problem that has been created by the other state it because it is because we have the highest literacy we grew faster than them economically politically economically we not we may not be that much but socially we are uplifting ourselves and so as a woman i am able to talk to you because of education otherwise i may be just a housewife so a simple housewife, illiterate housewife, but things have changed. So you can realize it, so you can understand how important education is. And not only that, from the nation perspective, they give so much importance that NEP 2020, National Education Policy of 2020, under this, there's going to be a big transformation. So from 9, 2024, things are going to change. The education system is now no longer going to be 10 plus two plus three, it's going to be five plus three plus three plus two. Where road learning by heart system or umto don low, no pang ten practical anzil ka, a practical apply tate. So when uncle to don't do not so on parrot anga kanzir avagin, kanzir na kan tiam tiam sang ur si hian, kan apply tail of a kan ti tail of a. To me, it's a um to don low ta. It's one skill learning anito don. NEP 2020 is one. Is subject do so ka izir te to. Patum palipo izir te ilu tanga entry, re entry, exit, re exit a paldon. So one, so one. Hemi national education. Dea hian. Head 
Maulana Abul Kalam Azar, Temalak na Azar, Ahian, things are going to change. Things are going to change. So, NEP 2020 is going to transform our education system. So, this is what I want to share with you that it is so important that I am looking forward to the day when Mizoram will no longer be learn applying the by heart system, the rote learning system. And it is because of that we don't have confidence, we don't have the skill more to apply our knowledge because it's all rote learning, it's only in the brain. So once you have complete, uh, finished your exam, you forget all what you have learned. It's going to be an application. That's why the developed countries, countries like Singapore, their education system is much higher, much better than, than us. It's, be, it's because of the system that they have applied. And you think about it, I mean, the Indian, why are they, there are so, lots of brain drain from India? Think about this vice president, the newly elected vice president, Kamala Harris. Had she been educated in India, rote learning, with that rote learning, I don't think her mother won't be able to have that kind of daughter, isn't it? So it's a kind of education. The education system that we are receiving is so much important that it's going to be a quality one. So with that, I'm going to stop it. So I want you to ponder more about their importance of education. So I, I'm going to announce the winner, but before that, I would just like to say thank you to all the resource person, um, to our secretary, Lalmat Somi Patsuau, and to Pinky Lal Zuitangi, Dr. Pinky Lal Zuitangi, introducing us about Maura Abul Kalam Azad. Although I thought that he was uh, our president. Thank you. And to Dr. Juliet for en enlightening us with increasing learning environment and to Dr. Zou Tanzami for maintaining positive mental health and to our principal. Thank you. And to the, high, to the director of higher and technical education and to all the students who are listening. At the beginning, there were about 400 something students. Now, the number of participants has come down to 306 only. So if I am to take their attendance, I would like to take the attendance of only those students who were, who 307 student participant attendance only today, I would like to mark it. Otherwise, the beginners, those who were attending just for the heck of it, I just would like to cross out that because tomorrow we are going to submit your attendance. So this is what I would like to share it. So, and I would like to say thank you to Avala. He's always helping us. He's always give, ready to help us and to the cell members and to all the students. Thank you, thank you very much. And to the slogan competitors. Thank you, you make it happen and you make it remarkable. Thank thanks to the team member and thank you to all of you. And the winner is, whom do you think? Is from first semester, psychology department. I hope, it, I wish and I hope it was, it will be our department, but it's not. The roll number is, it start with two. Two, one, zero. Who is drawn number two, one, zero? K. Ramnun Sanga is the winner. We'll be giving him a certificate and 1,000 rupees. Congratulations, Ramnun Sanga. And to all the other participants, thank you. Handing over to Somi. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sani, for the interesting summarization and for, uh, congrats to uh, Ramdi Sangha. And since there are other slogans which are very deserving of prizes, the research cell has decided to give five concession prizes to these five participants, and they are Lali Nkola, fifth semester public administration department, Lin Tana Jongte, Department of English, first semester, Joseph Lurem Sanga, Department of Public Administration, first semester, Ulfak Oma, Department of Political Science, fifth semester, 
KML Samutluangi, wall number 172, third semester. And the slogans will be put up on the college official uh, Instagram account that is GHBC underscore official underscore Mizoram. And please go and make sure you follow that account. And that will be all for today's, uh, today's webinar. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated and uh, for giving us your time. Thank you to our principal, our uh, resource persons, and the research and consultancy cell. And until then, take care, stay safe, and have a nice day.